Alright guys, the big thing to the thing happened. That thing being the big core update for Train Simulator, which was very much needed for a long, 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 long time. And uh, it was released yesterday, and I was trying to hold out on uh, making a video here until they released the DX12 uh, experimental, which of course we'll get into as well. But uh, it should be ready to go on your uh, Steam store if you have automatic updates. Uh, you may need to restart Steam um, and all that good stuff. But uh, to be clear, what I've got in my current experience, I've got an RTX 3060 12 GB RAM, VRAM. Uh, I've got a 5800X uh, AMD CPU, 32 gigs RAM on an M.2 SSD. And I backed up, which I hope a lot of you did if you were worried about a lot of your content disappearing. I backed up almost pretty much my entire Railworks folder just in case. And so far, I have had nary a single problem that I've yet to run into. Although I've read all over the interwebs, a uh, few people have various problems. But uh, we'll get into uh, a couple of those things here shortly. So, uh, they and by they, Dovetail Games, have released essentially another yearly package, which they pretty much said they weren't going to do <laughs> after they changed from the yearly format to just calling it Train Some Classics. So the newest pack that you can buy, which, let me be clear, you very much do not have to buy to get this core update. You have to buy nothing. Of course, you have to have Train Some Classic naturally but you do not have to buy anything to get this core update it is free uh, but if you want the new pack which is sort of like the yearly pack that we've gotten in years past it uh you can see up here it's got train some classic which it obviously says it's got the core update you, you get the huddersfield line uh the long island railroad line and the pegnitzelbahn uh and a rail bus to the stupid class 142 thing that's <laughs> mostly negative user reviews. That's lovely. So that is a, a pack that you can buy, and that's 25 bucks. That's basically like if you don't have Train Some Classic and you want three different routes, three different regions, you would buy that. Bam. Or if you just don't have any of the routes, hell, you can get all three of those routes for 25 bucks, And that's a steal considering, you know, they're generally about... 40 bucks each in American dollars. Yes, we do get charged more than the Brits and a lot of other people, but that's just dovetail being dickheads as usual. Uh, of course, they'll say they have an excuse as to why the prices are like that, but it's it's just total bullshit, and that's, that's basically it. So that's the new pack. If you want the new pack, that is it right there. It is uh, $24.99. Now, let's go over the... Uh, the updates here. So let me bring this over. So this is on the store page, uh, or their forum anyway. I'm sorry. I'll link it down below where you can go and find this information. And it clearly uh, denotes everything that's going to be in the update. So it says we're bringing the update, da-da-da. It says updated core code to maximize stability across 32-bit and 64-bit editions. See, I thought they were just going to get rid of 32-bit. I can't believe that people still play on 32-bit, if I'm completely honest. Uh, added DX12 Experimental Edition, which they added today, the 28th of uh, May, 2023. Um, updated dependent plugin applications, additional installation of uh, C++, C++, C++. I'm going to get it right eventually. Uh, basically runtime drivers for, uh, for visual things. That's what that is. It should do it automatically. Uh, and improved error handling. Uh, and reporting to provide additional information on crashes. And this is just crap about the roots. They did some things to the roots as well. But uh, let's go ahead and hop into the game. Right. So now when you launch the game, you're going to get this window to appear. And you can have it appear every single time you launch the game if you'd like. And I'm, of course, launching it out of the Steam Store and not a shortcut on my desktop. So it's going to give you three options. Play Train Simulator, which I'm assuming is the old 32-bit. Uh, play Train Simulator 64-bit Edition, which all three of these were updated. Uh, let's be clear on that as well. And then the 64-bit DX12 Experimental as well. Uh, first, we're going to try out... 
the regular old 64-bit and I'm going to try something intensive and we're just going to do quick uh, comparisons as far as performance between uh, you know the same thing between 64-bit the standard here which I'm going to go with first and then the experimental so let's get started so you'll know right off the bat that your game has been updated uh, by this new splash pad or splash screen or whatever the technical mumbo jumbo is in the gaming industry uh, this is the new screen. Of course, you can put whatever screen here you want uh, if you're into that sort of thing. But this is how you know it's been updated. So it's going to look like that. One thing I would highly, highly recommend doing right off the bat is going into your settings, uh, going onto your tools, and then clearing your cache. Now, click that. It's going to ask you if you want to restart. If you hit yes, it will restart in the 32-bit mode for whatever reason. At least it does for me. So I'm going to hit no. So after you click yes on clearing the, the, the cache, don't click yes to restart. Click no. Hit cancel and then quit the game yourself. I've already done it so I'm not going to do it right off the bat here. But uh, first thing we'll do is we'll hop in and go over a few things. So right after this update was released, a lot of people were uh, commenting that their main menu or scenario screen where you choose your routes and all that stuff was uh, either blank, there were no pictures there, uh, and when they would select something, they would get that, that, you know, that working icon of the thing spinning around and around, and, and some pictures just wouldn't show up at all. I haven't had any of those issues. Uh, looking through all my tabs here, I've got all but I think one it doesn't work, and I think it's because I don't have that root installed anymore. Yeah, this Hamburg to Hanover. So I don't know what's going on with that. So what I've heard is it's got something to do with the size of the thumbnail, uh, which basically causes your game to lock up. So if you're having that issue, I'm sure Dovetail Games is very much working on that to get it working again. But there's a workaround you can do where you can go into your game files and delete the, uh, the JPEGs or the thumbs or I think they're PNGs, I don't know, uh, the file type, uh, that you can get rid of, which will then uh, allow you to play. Otherwise, because if you like click on it here, it'll just keep loading and loading, and it'll just kind of lock the game up, and you won't ever be able to do anything. So you can go in and delete the thumbnail picture. Another workaround is go back to the main menu, uh, click the Build tab, like you want to go through the editor, uh, click on the scenario, and whatever route you're having a problem with, I'll just say Raton Pass for shizzies and gizzies, uh, and we'll say it's this, Grain Extra West. So you can go into it and play it as kind of a quick workaround like this. So you would click this, click Edit here, and then once you do that, it'll go into the editor, and you literally just click the Play button once you get into the editor, and it'll run the scenario as it's supposed to because it's not... It's not doing something with the thumbnail uh, from the main menu, which is which is odd. So that's kind of a quick workaround. They uh, they denote that on the forum as well. I will try and find that article and link it to you because it'll probably be explained way more clearly and concisely than I can explain it because I like to chew on my tongue quite a bit. Uh, so first things first, like I said, we're in the current updated 64-bit build. So we're going to find something that I know is heavy. Pick some things, like if you want to test this out, pick some things that you know are fairly heavy within Train Some Classic. There's a lot of them. I'm sure we all know a lot right off the bat. One of the first things I thought of was uh, smoke boxes stuff. A lot of his uh, his locomotives, like the Big Boy and the Chally. So, and of course there's, you know, tons of other examples as well. Now these, to be fair, as smoke boxes gone on over the years, haven't been that intensive uh, frame rise. They've been relatively smooth, but it's never been super smooth for me. So I'm going to choose one that uh, I kind of looked at already earlier here. We're going to go for the Challenger um, Part 2, high def. So, that you know, there's high def and standard def variants, which I'm sure will change the performance as well. We're going to go with Part 2, and it's also raining. So that's going to add a bit more crap on the screen to make your uh, your GPU work and all that good stuff. So I'm going to select that and we're going to fire it up here and see what happens. Uh, 
All right, let's let all this crap get off the screen. Turn on my frame counter. I am getting upwards of 30 frames right now, about 35. Uh, typically, in smoke boxes stuff, I would get about 25 to 30 on average. Um, of course, a busier you know scenario, a lot more AI going on. There's going to be different stuff going on. I'm going to go ahead and enable the auto uh, crew here. Get this thing moving. And this has got the newest, uh, well, no, it doesn't have the newest AP Weather, but it's got AP Weather installed, and I'm still using Railworks Enhancer as well, and I've changed nothing. Uh, so, so far, so good. It's buttery smooth. I mean, this is the high-def variant. Uh, it's, you know, it's depending on where you're looking, it's getting upwards of 30 FPS, 35, and for something of this depth and fidelity within Train Sim Classic, that's pretty damn spicy. That's very fast. Uh, 37, we'll go in the cab here, look around. Still 33? I mean, we got we got lights in the cab on. I've never had an experience in, in smoke boxes stuff that is this smooth. So, the core update has done something. They, they basically went in like a surgeon. Like a surgeon! And removed a bunch of stuff that wasn't necessary within the core code of the game. Causing errors, crashes, you know, things running, script-type crap running that just wasn't necessary. It was very old, and they just removed it. And uh, it seems to be a much better experience. So we're just going to keep a look at this angle here. I'm going to remember I'm getting about 35 FPS. I'm going to back out, and we're going to go in the experimental DX12 build. Alrighty, we are now in the DX12 Experimental. I'm going to go back to Union Pacific Wasatch Grade with the Challenger. And uh, let's see, it was this one here, yeah? Part 2, high def. Uh, so I was getting 35, 36 roughly. So again, this is DX12. Earlier was the bog standard 64-bit update. This is DX12 Experimental. Let's go ahead and fire it up here. If it takes any longer, I don't know why loading would change much. It shouldn't take very long. I think fast load is default and has been for the last couple of years now. Jump scare. And look at that. It is not very good at all. I am not slowly moving my mouse. That is just the way <laughs> the frames look now. That is not very good at all. Very choppy. Uh, very stuttery. Again, I'd like to reiterate, this is an experimental DX12. Uh, I'm getting what says 15 FPS right now, if you can see in the tiny little... Those numbers lie, too, by the way. That's the lowest they'll ever say is, like, I think 10 to 15 uh, and I've also noticed that my Steam Overlay, which I typically use for FPS counter, is not working with this because it is DX12. So I'm sure Dovetail Games uh, is going to work on this, but it is notably crappier than the standard 64-bit. Uh, as it stands right now, I would definitely recommend uh, just sticking with the 64-bit build uh, because this just, this isn't, you know... This isn't cutting the mustard right now. Hopefully it will. DX12, the DX12 upgrade and use is supposed to increase uh, performance. Um, but it's just, it's not there right now. So I'm personally going to stick with uh, the standard 64-bit. Because uh, this just, this is not very fresh. So that being said, let's go back to 64-bit. All right, so we're back in the standard updated 64-bit variant. And when this uh, patch was being talked about, because Dovetail teased some information about this, but they didn't really say what for a couple of months. Uh, well, obviously, that new update is finally here. It's out. I'm using it. You should be able to use it. Uh, it rolled out worldwide, if I'm not mistaken. So I definitely check uh, your, your Steam download section. 
But one of the things that hit me right off the bat to try and test was the Long Island Railroad, this right here. We don't have a lot of great passenger routes uh, for North American stuff and train sim that, that run well either. This looked phenomenal. The route was great. It was very, very nice. You know, it seemed new uh, in in the, you know, the, the length of time for Train Some Classic. It just seemed very updated and fresh, and it was just very nice. But the performance was dog shit. It was very, very bad. Uh, you know, I don't know. Some people said it had something to do with the route itself. Uh, you know, some say it was the M7s, the multiple units like you see in the picture here, uh, that had something to do with it. But uh, it just really, really sucked, and it was it was a shame. It literally hurt me internally because it was such a good route, but you just couldn't run it because the performance was so bad. I'm talking like sub 10 FPS. It was like an old timey picture show. It was terrible. So with the core update, it's interesting to see what this is going to do because uh, they noted in the patch notes so this Long Island Railroad is part of the three routes to come with the new Trainsome Classic which you do not have to buy again let me reiterate you don't have to buy it to get the update but if you do buy it you'll get the Long Island Railroad uh, Pegnitzelbahn and Huddersfield so it said there were a couple updates in this something to do with uh, uh, global language support some gobbledygook and something about quick drives so i'm going to go back into one of the scenarios because the worst performance i ever had on this route was in the default scenarios so let's see i'm going to choose an m7 because the m3s they were nice uh they were very nice they they released that several months later uh but it you know it was still the stuttery mess because the m7s which were the culprit really ideally uh were still on the map so there was a big issue so I was getting like 10 FPS on a good day on the Long Island Railroad. So let's choose something here. I'll choose something with some weather, too, just to get some more crap on the screen. Uh, let's do Hicksville. This one right here, Summer of Hell. 1631 from Hicksville to New York Penn. Okay, let's fire it up. Let's see if there's any change at all. Okay, <laughs> right off the bat, I am seeing some some smoother operation here. I've I've got. Uh, let me get on the frame counter. I'm getting 20 FPS right now, and while most you know your your hardcore first person shooters like that's dog crap. I get it, but that's this is a different kind of thing. This is a simulator. 20 FPS and train sim with with good DLC. Is very much playable. Very, very much playable. I'll do it all day long. If it's under that, it starts to get stuttery and very noticeable. Now, normally, you know, I tested every scenario on Long Island Railroad when it came out. Normally, when you load it in, it would just be so stuck. You know, if you tried to look around with the free cam, it would be so, so, so stuck. All right, so it's, it's you know, 20, 21 FPS, and it's still kind of there. So let's just fire it up, try and get on the track here a bit. Let me get the key on. Uh, let's get the wiper going. Let's get the marker light off. Jeez. Even looking around out here, man. So pre this patch, you could not move the camera around like this. I promise you, you could not. I mean, you could. It just wouldn't be a smooth experience. This is, this is night and day difference. So that's looking, uh, that's looking east there, I think. And then this is looking towards uh, Jamaica in the city. A little bit lower there. But I'm getting much better performance here on freaking Long Island Railroad. This this is like up in the, the annals of uh, Woodhead in Blue in terms of shit performance. Uh, you know, and I'm sure various other routes as well. Let's get back in here. So it's still about 20. And we're looking towards Jamaica. This is like, this is crazy. This is, this is at least 
seven FPS more than I was getting prior to the uh, to the patch. Let's see if I can remember how to do this here. You got to charge the brakes, I think. Uh, t there we go. There we go. Let's get the doors open. All right, the brakes are charged. Good deal. Is there anything else that we have to turn on here? Plus, I want to see if any of the... Uh, does this freaking visor not move? I thought that moved. Plus, I want to see if any of the other stuff is uh, kind of jacked up with this. Like the, the scripture, if you will. The uh, the witchcraft within the sim. And, and things just not working well. So, let's see if uh, ATC and all that is gonna jive I don't know why I did that all right so we're moving all right so I've got a 30 limitation so let's pipe it up here. Still getting about 20 FPS. Typically down here in Hicksville, looking uh, west towards Jamaica, it was a complete slideshow. This is insanely smoother. Yes, it's still 20 FPS, but like I said, 20 FPS in Train Sim with good product is extremely playable. To each their own, obviously, and of course. Um... But this, this is totally different. I have never seen Long Island Railroad this smooth. It is incredible. I am very happy right now. I can, I can run the Long Island Railroad, hopefully. Now, this is just one scenario, of course, right? It's probably all going to change. Plus, I would like to notate I've got the maximum graphic settings within the game engine, right? like the, the game settings. So I've got the max anti-aliasing. Uh, I've got all the sliders all the way to the right. I'm using Railworks Enhancer Pro, I think. Not the second one, but not the first one. And Armstrong Powerhouse Weather, which those typically don't give you too much of a hit. And it's still this smooth. This is, this is kind of incredible. I'm almost shocked. I don't know what to think. Um, <laughs> but it's... It's notably, notably smoother than, uh, it's, it's so, it's so weird seeing this, just, smoothness of this thing on Long Island Railroad in Train Sim Classic. This is crazy. All right, let's, uh, let's move on to something else. I mean, shit, if that's that good, sky's the limit, right? Let's go check something else out. All righty. Now we are on Canadian Mountain Passes, probably one of my least favorite routes for North American trains in Train Sim Classic. I just very much don't like it. It's such a plain, bare bones route. But before us, we have got the Searchlight Simulations AC44. Big ol' hairy golden beaver. Yeah, shut up, go away. And uh, this is quintessentially one of the best products to ever grace us within Train Sim Classic. And that's not even an opinion. That's just factual. The thing is so in-depth, it's almost stupid. It is a very complex machine. It looks phenomenal. It sounds phenomenal. It feels phenomenal. And uh, that being said, some third-party things after the core update may not work as intended anymore. Now, I've read about this thing already, so this isn't going to jump scare me. But apparently some of the things with this were kind of poo-pooed. Uh, not only rail driver or whatever, uh, you know, peripheral you use to control your virtual trains other than a keyboard and mouse 
Uh, rail driver got jacked up, kinda, and uh, some various other things. Let's go ahead and hop the cab here. So, I'm seeing pretty damn good performance here as well, guys. I'm getting 26 FPS in the freaking searchlight Golden Beaver. 27! And we're surrounded by them. There's like 10 in this friggin' yard. The more Searchlight 44s you put on screen, you know, it's just dim beat of brakes, you know, <laughs> the less performance you're going to get. But this is insane. I'm getting like 26 FPS right now in this thing. Now, it was never, it was never like just terribly low for me, not by any regard. Uh, but this is, look how, just look at the, look how quick that moves when you're looking around. Hot damn. All right, so the, the thing I read about is a reverser. So there's a lot of crazy, awesome scripting in these locomotives, right? Not only theirs, but other developers and uh, modders as well. So some things may poo-poo uh, due to that core update. So let's see. The one big thing I've read about is this key here, the reverser, right? And I have also got, please don't shame me. I have enough shame. I have got the Steam variant of the uh the cp ac44 it was very graciously gifted to me and uh i cannot be mad at that i still love this thing to death of course i just don't have a couple of decals and things like that so tldr this is the steam version not not the searchlight store version let's see if we can grab this reverser here I cannot. I cannot. I don't remember if there's a shortcut to grab it. Uh, but I, I cannot grab it. So it's something to do with the scripting, I guess. But yeah, I'm just I'm trying to grab it. It was kind of finicky before trying to grab it, but I'm literally, I've tried like a million times already so far and I can't grab it. That being said as well, you know, you can't blame any of these developers or modders, right? Dovetail didn't really say what was going to change, what was going to, you know, get, air quote, fixed, right? They didn't, they didn't know what to try and jump out ahead and fix some of their products to do. But I guarantee you these guys are already working on it. They've already made a Facebook post as well as many other uh, you know, modding groups and, and things of that nature. So, these guys are working on it. They are very much aware. And uh, I would say any anything you come across that whether you may think is new or not, I'd probably say let these guys know. You know, the more information, the better. Uh, know your enemy, essentially. And bugs are the enemy. You know, issues like that. So, the more the merrier. If you've got some kind of thing going on, definitely let them know whether it's, you know, Searchlight, uh, UTS, uh, shit, Alan Thompson Sim, uh, you know, just trains, whoever. Uh, you know, virtual railroads, whatever. If you found something going on, definitely let them know. That may, you know, that may help them. And uh, Dovetail as well as far as the, uh, the, the big overall update. But just the smoothness here is astounding. I, uh, I definitely remember testing. I think this is the Empties East scenario yeah and i distinctly remember testing this thing after i got it and it sure as shit wasn't this smooth it's just crazy being able to pan around uh the yard here with with all these uh searchlight ac44s it's like butter it is very much like butter let's see is there anything else that we can do here so the brake controller seems to work Andy still bails. Headlights still work. So it seems okay for the most part. It's just that that reverser thing. I'm sure they'll figure that out. This this thing is like this this freaking thing is like a cornerstone of Train Sim Classic 
to us, uh, you know, North American players. Except for the old farts that say it's, like, too advanced. They can just go suck an egg. But, uh, yeah, so I'm sure they're working on it. Let's go test something else. All right, this is the very awesome, or at least I like it a lot, uh, Kaihin to Tohoku, uh, Tokyo Commute, Commute, Jesus Christ, I cannot speak. The Kaihin Tohoku Tokyo Commuter. There, I said it. Uh, this just released, very awesome little route, and it was kind of weird performance-wise. You can see the train right over there, and just kind of know right off the bat. Uh... Now, the bullshit train sim overlay frame counter says I'm getting 14 FPS. That's the lowest it will ever go. It's a freaking liar. I've got my Steam overlay on. And then uh, MSI Afterburner in the distance here. And I'm getting 6 FPS. So, there was no gain here. But, this route is almost brand new you know the developers union workshop may have had a, a, a few white rabbits in their hat tricks up their sleeve so to say but to be fair i was getting five fps at ueno station and this is the most egregious frame issue on the route uh let's let's not beat around that bush it's pretty damn smooth until you get to some of the bigger stations and then it's not but Ueno is the most egregious uh, and, and very poor performance-wise. And I was getting 5 FPS. Now I'm getting 6 to 7. <laughs> I guess that's something to be uh, happy about. I don't know. It's some improvement, but uh, this is going to be a developer core thing with this. Hopefully they can figure this out because I love the shit out of this little route. It's very modern-looking. It's uh, it's not very high speed, but it feels high speed because it's narrow gauge. There's just trains going left and right, and it's busy, you know, outer Tokyo. Let's uh, let's check something else out. All right, burbles and gerbils, welcome to the uh, Bino Mountain Sub. We're in Cumberland, and uh, so this came out like a year or two ago, um, and it was a nice route, but the stock was very, very sub mid. Very bleh. Just a bunch of reused stuff with new paints. Uh, you know, and it also contained DTM products, which are pretty crap. Uh, and the thing about DTM products is they have the performance of really good DLC without being really good DLC. So they perform badly a lot of the times, but there's no reason for them to perform badly because they're just very bare bones and just not very good. So these, I'm sure a lot of you know right off the bat, are the older uh, JR slash Searchlight uh, Dash 2s. These are the from the from the OG Norfolk Southern Conrail and Conrail Patched Pack. And uh, so this is back when, when Searchlight, this was their first pack of these, essentially. I think, I'm pretty sure. Uh, you know, the first Dash 2s, and I still love these to death. They came with these. Uh, the Norfolk Southern livery, the Maersk Line livery. Um, and it was just an awesome pack when it came out. It was like nothing else in the world. Just like their uh, Golden Beaver AC44, same thing. When it came out, it was just it was freaking groundbreaking. So, these things are fairly old now. And when they built them, you know, it's probably a totally different code at core, different kind of scripting. Uh, it's just shit, the model itself, the polys within, I don't know. It was just a different time. It was many years ago. So, they've learned a lot of things since then. Uh, to their newest stuff, like the BNSF pack with the uh, XBN, uh, etc. So these are pretty old. That being said, I never had uber good performance with these. Uh, I was always getting about 20 FPS, especially if I had more than one of these on screen. I never got super good FPS. This is a standard-ass B&O Mountain Sub scene that I've got jiving here. So there's a lot of cars around. There's a lot of locomotives around. There should be some locomotives coming around the uh, bend there. Yep, there it comes now. So there's a lot of stuff going on, and it's still this smooth. Um, you know, out here, uh, looking that way, about 26. It's topping out 26 FPS. Looking that way, 30. 
Looking that way, about 26. Looking, so we're now looking the direction of some of these very uh, chode-like DTM products that are heading this way, which they tank performance. For whatever reason, they tank performance. I don't know why. <laughs> it's not like it's anything special to have performance that bad. Uh, so that's probably why the, the frames are tanking so far, but we'll hop in. I still love the sound of this thing. I still love this thing very, very much. But this, even this in here. So we're getting about 24, 25. It's maxing out. Of course, if you zoom in a bit, it will go up some. Uh, but as far as I can tell, everything still works in here. So let's get that engine run. Set, gen field, control, and fuel pump. Let's go ahead and throw the key forward there. Get our gauge lights. Everything else seems to be working as intended. Set the engine to run. I'm probably doing this backwards. Sorry. Number boards. Da, 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 da. And lights. Everything still works, guys, with this. God almighty, if that's just not a glorious sound in Leslie. Woohoo! Love it. Love it. Something else, though. Look at look at this friggin' thing coming. Look at that light flare. <laughs> and look at the performance we're getting, because this thing's getting near us. 17, 16 FPS. Why does it perform that badly? There's no reason for it to perform that badly. So while it's doing that, I'm going to bring up uh, the task manager. I'm going to plop it on the screen here. All right. Let's see. I'm going to switch to display capture. This is my current performance with my uh, GeForce 3060 and 5800X. My graphics card is actually being used now. Look at the utilization down on the bottom left. 85, 87, 86. The GPU is being used. My GPU rarely got above like 30% before. I don't even remember. It was nothing worth remembering. It's being used now. As well as a CPU. Now, I don't have one of those super hot, you know, Intel or whatever the hell, uh, you know, single, single core high speed CPUs that a lot of you train some chads have. I've got a more predominant do a lot of things at once and do them pretty damn good CPU, which is, of course, AMD. But, with that being said, I'm still getting pretty good performance there. I'm getting 30% CPU utilization right now. These charts are off the charts. Now, I'm not super technical, but I can guarantee you they didn't used to look like this. Not by any stretch. Stuff is being used now. The core code. Something has changed. And it has changed for the good. There's some, some nice stuff going on with this update here. Very nice. Alright, now, I, I really don't know what else to test. I'm seeing some good things so far. And this is just my experience. I'm sure a lot of you will run into other things. And as usual... If you have any questions, comments, if, if you've found anything out, uh, let them rip down below. Let's see what you guys have to say or have experience. It'll be interesting seeing what it is across the board. But uh, I don't really know what else to test. I can sit here and test crap all day. But uh, we all have different things. We have different specs on our PCs, so on and so forth. I do know the uh, KCS lines, rest in peace, KCS, uh, Haven of Shreveport is a friggin' glorious route and uh it's, it's just something to behold especially for freeware especially for something in the south which we don't have a lot of in uh in train some classic for north american stuff uh but it never ran that great because there's a lot of stuff on screen there's a lot going on a lot of detail um 
you know, it ran fine, but it just wasn't very smooth. So it'll be interesting to see how this is. And I'm going to try and just pick a random mod uh, and and plop it down here and uh, just see how it runs. Uh, see if anything's any different. Um, Havener, the town in Oklahoma that's at the north end of the route on this map, is probably one of the most intensive areas. So I'm going to try to go to that once it gets done loading in here. Any day now. Good lord, look at that ground texture in the background. <laughs> uh, that's a nice picture. All right. Come on, game. It ain't like you've never loaded this route before. Let's let's go. Awkward. Well, hopefully it didn't break this route. That's amazing. The f <laughs> so these thumbnails, like the frames were 160 because I've got it set to my native uh, refresh rate. And that one picture of the new train sim uh, bundle went down to like 7 FPS. That's crazy, man. All right, are we in Hefner? Yeah, we're in Hevener. So it's telling me I'm getting like 40 FPS right now on the overlay. You can't, you can't see the uh, train sim overlay right now because I ain't got nothing going on. But this is a heavy area. Very heavy. Very heavy performance-wise. All right, so let's try. God, I don't know what to put down. I've got a ton of mods. Like I said, a lot of mods and third-party content may break. Uh, it's just the nature of the beast with with the way stuff is, but I, I don't know what to put down, so uh, give me a moment. All right, well, that's, uh, that's a negative. That's not going to happen, so I was just trying to think of a, uh, I've got so many mods, I, I can't keep track of it all. And so I just thought of a recent one, and that was the UTS uh, Very Amazeballs coaster pack that they released uh, a couple months ago. Um, and I was just placing it down. I placed the engine down, and I was placing a coach down. And I've got the all-too-dreaded uh, error message upon game crash um, out of memory. Now, I thought... Part of the core update was to get rid of stuff like this, make it more stable in the editor. I don't know if it comes down to this. I don't know if it comes down to the mod itself. Uh, I don't know what. But I'll just say as far as default things so far that you can get off of the Steam store, uh, those seem like a pretty safe bet right now with uh, with performance from this big... Uh, core update from Dovetail Games. But those are just my experiences. Just wanted to go over some. Uh, and I'd like to know what you guys have had as well. You, I'm sure you all have some totally different content than I do. Uh, I'd like to know what kind of machines you run, what kind of errors you're running into if you have any. Um, but again, I, I would very much recommend backing up your original install if you've not yet gotten the update. And once you do get the update, go in the game, clear the cache, and then uh, exit and restart the game. And uh, that should fix most uh, problems. But that's just a quick look at uh, some of the updates for the uh, the core train sim thing. Let me know what you guys think and uh, what you've had uh, that you've run into. But uh, for now, that is it, guys. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.